Welcome to the Nacolas Workshop. I'm Paul. In today's video I'll show you the new electric motor for my IME Watchmaker's Lathe along with a few other bits and bobs I've got for it. <laughs> Hi everyone, uh, I hope you're all tickety-boo, everything wonderful here in the Nicholas workshop. So I've managed to track down um, an old uh, electric motor for the IME Watchmaker Slave. Um, my must-have requirements uh, were that it was variable speed, um, had a high maximum RPM, uh, 240 volts power and uh, had a fairly small footprint um, and the nice to have sort of requirements were that it had a, a foot pedal um, speed control um, so I'm quite pleased to report that I managed to uh, get all, all of this uh, so uh, this is the uh, this is the motor it's a uh, I don't know, we're not getting so much let's have a twist of the light that might make it a bit better so it's a uh, popular progress variable speed motor uh, which is made in London and England here uh, has a maximum revs of uh, 6000 and as you can see the footprint's quite small if we uh, put it beside our coca can coca can or even a can of coke um, <laughs> coca can that's good um, can of coke um, we can see it's roughly about the same size obviously not very high as well so that's really good news um, the, um, and it has also had a, a foot pedal let me get let's put that there and get this so we've got a, a foot pedal here to um, adjust the speed um, a bit old and tired um, to be honest both the motor and the um, and the foot pedal probably could do with uh, some sort of restoration work but uh, I really don't want to become the channel who takes things apart and never puts them back together again you know and I've got the uh, the Unimat SL uh, on the go so I'm just going to try and keep this all in one piece and at some time in the future when the SLs are up and running, um, I'll have a look at this a bit closer. You know, the goal is just to um, to get it up and running, really. So um, let me just uh, uh, break away for a second. I'll plug it all in and show you it uh, running. Okay, back in a moment. Okay, we're back now. So I've got the foot pedal connected up to the uh, the motor and got some mains power to it. So uh, I'll just control it with my hand. And you control it fairly slowly. I don't know. Obviously, I don't know how fast this thing's going, but. So it seems to work. Um, so um, it did. Uh, it does smell a bit warm here. So maybe I do need to spend a bit of time looking at this um, um, motor and um, and the foot pedal, uh, which is a bit of a shame. Slow proceeding, Stan. But um, yes, the uh, the motor comes from a. Um, a clock maker's uh, grinding and polishing um, uh, machine so um, that's why it's quite good at the the maximum revs so um, yeah so so it's sort of designed for the job so that should be quite good so yeah so very um, very pleased with those um, that's a, well as I just found out I probably need to do a bit of investigation and make sure they're safe but um, 
yeah, fingers, fortunately I didn't pay very much money for them, so if something is drastically wrong, it probably won't be the end of the world, but um, I'll uh, um, just move these out of the way, and then we'll have a look at the other bits and bobs I've got for it. Okay, back in a moment. Okay, I'm back now. So, um, one of the things that came came with the motor was this old uh, mounting board. Um, so, motor on the back here, uh, lathe on the front here, and it's even got some holes for all the um, the uh, eight mil collets. So, um, I'm not sure whether it's something for long term, but it it'll definitely be useful to get get it get it up and running so that's quite good um, I've been thinking about um, from what I can see with the watchmakers lathes to tension about there seems to be two two methods um, well actually there, there doesn't seem to be massively a massive amount of tension from what I can see but seeing but what I had thought um, and I saw this on uh, Craig's workshop on one of the projects he was doing is potentially just making like a hinge mechanism here so I can adjust it to do some fine adjusting on the um, on the belt well that's pretty much what you see on any lathe it's sort of like that on my Myford so um, so I may I'm not sure whether I'll do that initially I might just position this in a once I have the belt to to um, just to create the tension anyway so uh, yeah, so we got the the baseboard that came. Um, I've got uh, some HSS steel to make some gravers. So these are they're they're really um, just a couple of mil thick. Uh, well, that one is. I got I got a few different sizes. I need to uh, create a. Um, uh, I need a handle as well, you know, and, and I need to cut the uh, um, the actual shape of the uh, the cutting tool. So I've been watching Dean DK, um, who, who's done lots of watchmaking um, videos. Um, don't know where he's disappeared to, but he uh, they were very good. Um, and I've got a couple of a. Uh, um, sharpening guides so really you just you 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 put your you put your uh, tool in there or your tool still and then you can um, I'm not the, I've done that right to be honest and then you can use that to, to go back and forward on a grind grinding stone to to get the right angle so um, they're only cheap and cheerful there's one here so uh, and you've got two two slots uh, two positions so you can um, adjust it and there's also a, another one with small wheels on and that that again will just go back and forward it's a pretty simple mechanism you just slide the tool in um, and then depending on where you are, what angle you can go, you can go at back and forward on the stone. So yeah, cheap and cheerful. Hopefully they should help me on that. Um, and the the last thing I got was this uh, eight millimeter collet. So that can fit into the um, into the watchmaker's lathe. But the thread on here is um, the same as my Unimat SL chucks. So what it does mean is I can put a um, one of the SL chucks on here so I can have a three or a four door chuck on there. So again that's quite a quite an interesting little adapter. It also I think it would also be good on the SL because if I've got the the watchmaking spindle in and I want to use the uh, three or four door chuck rather than have to take the um, the spindle out and replace it with the other one. Um, or the standard spindle rather than a watchmaker's one. It means I could just pop this in there and, it, and, and just do a quick job using the three or four jaw chuck. So that's actually was a really good find. Um, 
it's not uh, it's not perfect, but it's um, yeah, it's a little bit battered around here. But a bit of cleaning up, and it'll be um, it'll be pretty good. So um, uh, the only things that I'm probably missing now are uh, the drive belt to connect, you know, the load to the motor, and also um, I need to get some um, sort of uh, grinding and lapping stones for the for the tool still because that's um, that's something I haven't got. So um, so it's sort of making progress really. It's quite surprising considering it wasn't even a planned project or even it was an ad hoc purchase. But um, it it sort of sparked my imagination here. It's quite a nice little thing, and um, I think it'd be quite good to to get it going. So um, so that's probably about it really for this one. So um, next video in this series will. Um, Hopefully there's no real problem on with the electric motor and the pedal. I'll have to check that out shortly. Um, but then we'll hopefully get it uh, get, get it all set up on here. And uh, we should sort of start to see some things revolving. So um, yeah, yeah, it's pretty, pretty exciting. So uh, as always, uh, stay uh, happy, healthy, and, um, and I'll see you next time. Cheerio.